Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about conditional statements, which can help us codify what I just said into Python, and then to use that in order to make this a little bit easier, right? And really just give us the answer, not all this other stuff where we have to go through it and figure it out, right? So before we do that, I'm going to take a little bit of a side step to talk about conditional statements. I'm going to do this with an example of money. So let's say I have $1. What I'm going to be able to do is going to be pretty limited with $1. So let's say I'm trying to figure out if I should eat out or not. And this is general, right? This should generally be based on the money I have. And I say, okay, if I have enough money, so if money is greater than 10, then I'm going to eat out. Yes. And else, uh, I'm not. No. Okay. So what this is going to do is going to check whether this variable money is greater than 10. And if it is, it will produce, it will run this code here in this block. And if it doesn't, else in any other case it will print out this block so the way that this will work if i print it is that i only have one as money so money is not greater than 10 so it's going to go to else and then it's going to print out no now this is a pretty simple concept but the way that these conditional statements work will perform some code if a condition is true and perform an and uh, run other code if another condition is true so if i instead had my money at um this number right so this is one million if i had a million dollars uh it will say yes i should eat out right so basically it, it checks this condition money greater than 10. if this is true then it will perform the code under that in that block like how we had these the block in the for loop these indents the indents uh, are what's going to tell us where the if statements are going to go Otherwise, that's what else says. If this isn't true, so money is less than or equal to 10, it's going to print out no. So this is how conditional statements work in Python. There's a couple of other ones you could do. There's something we can do that's if money is greater than 10, print yes. Else, l if, which is else if money is greater than 5, print maybe and then else print no a couple things to note here first of all we have these colons and the indent indented blocks this defines what happens when you perform when you when a certain condition is true and now we have l if the way that this works is that it will check if money is greater than 10. if it is then it will print yes otherwise if it's not greater than 10 it will check this next condition if money is greater than five and print maybe if it is, and if it's not, then it's going to go to else and print no. So let's say I have money that's in between these two values. So I say money is seven. So it's not greater than 10, but it's greater than five. What do we expect to happen? We probably should expect maybe, right? Because it's, it's not greater than 10, but it's greater than five. And this is the result that comes out. So else if we'll check this only if this condition is false, we'll check another condition. It's actually a little bit of shorthand for this. So if money is greater than 10 print yes else and then having another if so if money is greater than five print maybe uh else print no so rather than having these a bunch of blocks right so the way this would work is if money is greater than 10 we go here otherwise we're going to go to this line of code and this itself is a conditional statement so if money is greater than five, then we're going to go here. And then otherwise, if money is not greater than five, inside of this little block, we're going to print now. So this is all shorthand for this. This is going to produce the same result. And I added an ellipses there. But this is going to produce the same result. This really is like a river, if you can imagine that, and putting up a levee on a river and moving which direction things are going to go. It branches out based on some conditions. Now, this is a pretty simple concept in uh, in theory, but it can be pretty powerful when you use it in the code because you can run certain lines of code based on certain conditions. Okay, so I'm going to use this conditional statement to simplify some of this output. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to just take this code, copy, paste it here. And if we remember, 
we were going through this for loop, assigning hours of math by dividing by 10, and then putting it into this calculation. The first thing I'm going to do is actually take this calculation and store it in a, va a variable. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to say fun is equal to, and I'm going to take this guy, hours of math squared minus four times hours of math. I'm going to store this into a variable. And then just to make this so it's consistent, I'm just going to put fun here. So all I'm doing here is just making this a little bit easier by storing this in a variable for us. So this should produce the same result as it did before, and it does, right? I, all I did was just clean up a little bit here. Now, the next thing I'm going to want to do is right now I'm printing this out every single time. But as I mentioned before, I only want to check when this fun is equal to zero. Those are the roots, right? There's only two values. That's true. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to use this conditional logic to help me out here by only printing this information out if this function is equal to zero. If you use the word if to describe something or when, you probably want to use something like a condition, some conditional logic. So let's put this in here, right? So what, what was the logic I just described? If fun is equal to zero, then I'm going to do all this stuff, right? I'm going to print out all this stuff. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm not going to do anything, right? So I'm going to pass. So this is what I want to do, right? So before, uh, I was printing out everything, but now I'm adding this conditional statement about fun. If the fun is equal to zero, like it was for 0.5, I'm going to print out all of this information. Otherwise, I'm not going to do anything. And to say that, I just write pass. So let me run this and show you what this looks like. So see, now this cleans things up a lot, right? Before we had all of this and we had to look through it, find when fun is equal to zero, and that's how we found the root right now it's only going to print it if it's zero so this directly gives us the roots to our equation um, so this is great uh, so th this is the this is what the goal was uh, of this video right we're going to use this conditional logic to check whether the fun value this the value of this equation is equal to zero and if it is we're gonna we're gonna print everything out otherwise we're not going to do anything uh, and actually in this case we don't even need this else statement so we can take this away completely and you can notice again how indenting matters, right? So everything that's indented from the for loop is included in this loop. So this if statement is going to be run every for every single number. So for every number, it's going to calculate the value of fun, and then it's going to check if it's equal to zero. So the indenting kind of matters. If I were to do this instead and unindent it, this is not going to work the way we thought. And actually, it's not going to produce anything. See, so the reason for that is that it actually does it after the loop. So this is looping over a whole bunch of times, assigning fun. And then once that's all done, it's checking whether fun is equal to zero, which it's not because this is going to be 10, right? The value when you plugged in 10. So the indenting does matter quite a bit. And that's actually how we designate uh, what's going to be inside of loops in Python. While it seems a little deceptively simple, there is meaning to these, in, uh, these indents. So just something to keep in mind. But as long as you just follow the general rule of whenever you're creating one of these, uh, make sure that you indent whenever you want it to be part of that condition, then everything will work out fine. Okay, great. Thanks for following along. Now we've used this conditional statement to be able to print out only the two roots. And we've been able to solve for those two roots using Python and knowing nothing about the quadratic formula. It's great news. Okay, thanks. And I'm looking forward to the next video.